Say again. Hi everybody, I'm Abby. Welcome to Abby's Den. We are looking at overlockers today. You can't see the overlocker in screen. It's here. I've got one overlocker. Now, if you've joined us from um, Instagram or Facebook, you'll have seen earlier today I put a little video uh, to show you a small selection, just a small selection I have of different overlockers. Uh, Jazz is here. Jazz, say hi. Hello. <laughs> and I haven't set my computer up so I can't see who's there to see see if anyone's there. Um, I'm sure I should be able to see people, but who's saying hello to us, Jazz? We've got Mrs. Dutch. Hi, Mrs. So, Dutch. Hi, here we are again. We are here again. Um, Colette says hello. Colette. Colette, I'm in trouble. My website went down. Colette um, ordered something and my website went down. No way. Do you remember I was speaking to them the other, the other day and it happened again and I've just been, they're in trouble with me. Oh, everybody's saying hello now. Hello. hello. Joe McKinley, Adam Stone. Hi, Joe. Hi, 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 Adam. Adam. You weren't here, you've not been here so far, all of, all of you, Joe. Lovely to see you. Who else have we got? Anne says evening. Evening all. McIver, is that how you say it? Anne McIver. Sneaky, one G says hey -ya. Hello, 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 hello. Faye's here from France. Who's FK. here from France? FK. I need to get this on here so I Do can... Do you like our new banner? It's an update from yesterday. Up there. It's all happening. It She's looks like it's snowing. Tech department. Where's tech department? She's there. She's there somewhere. I'm not oh, very good with those. Point it. So, where's the lamp? This is this is a little kit. Let, let's go over what, oh, what's you know happening. What? Did, what did people think of the lampshade? That, sorry, oh. that's what I thought you were getting. No, no. I did mean to. This is one of my I've daylight lamps. I've seen plenty of people in your direction. Thank you, Adam. Thanks, Adam. That's really kind for you. This was something that I featured in one of my videos earlier this year. Yeah. Remember, I think it was back in summer. It's a foldy go. I don't... <laughs> I have so many lamps now, I just feel like it's like, oh, glaring at me. Um, in the past, I've had these issues where people have said it's not bright enough and we can't see things. And um, um, I have always had this, always, as in five years or six years, this lamp. It's a, it's a nice slim line. It's called the slim line. And you see how it sits. And it's pink as well. This is rose gold. They're rose gold. Rose gold. Okay. So it sits there and I can sit another sewing machine there and it um, sort of sits in its place. I don't know if we can turn the camera around a bit so you can see. Which way would you just like? Towards that way so you can see how it can bend and I can sort of fit it there and then it sits in the middle of a table because it can get quite dark in my really dark in Manchester, it's really miserable. If you're local to me, you it's know. It's 5pm, we've got the curtains five closed. PM. Yeah, yeah, I need to fix it. If you if you watched the other day, you'll see I need to fix the curtains. Um, but this is really good. You can swing it around and I love it. Mm. And that swings around. Anyway, that's me showing up. So that was a lamp and then, um, you know, I, I saw them at a show. I can't remember which show and I told them about them and then they introduced me to the sewing machine lamp and then a relationship happened, formed mm. and then they've been showing me all sorts of cool gadgety things like this. I love this. It doesn't, it doesn't go all the way around but it folds away. A little yeah. bit of promo stuff going on there. But the reason we love daylight lamps, apart from they are actually really good lamps, and, and you know, when you've had them for five or six years and the light doesn't change and the quality doesn't change and it's still functioning really well, uh, you want to share the news, don't you? You want to let people know that they can buy a good quality product. And this is the big prize, isn't it? I'm going to tell. If you watched, joined us on Saturday, you'll see Jasmine's lampshade i finished it off and i didn't bring it down it's, it's yeah this is not white so this is actually a light it looks light it, look it just light. looks like yeah you can see it going on the two it's one. really flat let's show you how thin it is that is so thin and it's not heavy and it's brilliant and it's just see it and does it scratch is it what sort of thing does it make you from it's plastic some sort of hard acrylic so you wouldn't it's not cut on there you wouldn't no don't cut on here 
I started I saying that yesterday. <laughs> just because they have the rulers on there, but you would just measure on that and draw, That's not right. cut. Okay, no. That's fine. So what we did, oh, we didn't like these leaves. Get rid of them. These leaves. <laughs> we like these leaves. Lee liked my leaves, didn't you, Lee? Is Lee here? Has he joined us? I, I've not seen Lee. I've seen it. Marion's Where here. Where are you, Lee? He'll watch it later. Cake. It's a good evening. Oh, Lady Cake's here. Who Lady else is here? Was Fab. Tamsin Slatter says hello. Hi. Got a few people. Got 20 people. Brilliant. About. Brilliant. But this, you can't. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see. The thing is, as much as like, we've got great lights, but you can't actually see. I can I see you it. You might be able to see like, this material. Yeah. I oh, can see yeah. it. You can see it. I can see it. But we can't see it on the camera. If you lift it up exactly horizontal. Yes, there you go. You can see that. So you can see through it. It's not very bright, but I can see it. It's quite clear. Yeah, the camera can see that very well. So if you're quilting, if you're... Now, somebody, um, what's she called? Laura. Midnight Costumes. Laura um, Midnight Costumes makes a lot of amazing... Is that in Bristol? Bristol. Oh, yeah. um, I was supposed to go down and visit her just before Covid lockdown and it never happened. Anyway, she's been making costumes with detail and she's working on an 18th century piece at the moment, um, which is obviously the Regency period, which is uh, Bridgerton and um, Pride and Prejudice, so all of that, so I'm sure some of you are into one or the other or both, like me. Um, so you do a lot of fine detail work, so if you're adding piping to your fabric or any sort of embroidery or you want to do free motion embroidery like I did on Saturday on Jasmine's Lamp, she was going to do some, she didn't. <laughs> Don't know anybody who hates sewing more than my own daughter. Just the way it is, isn't it? Misses a generation, they say. My mum didn't sew, but my gran did. I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes you get generations of it. Don't sit there looking guilty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yes, so you can draw that design. Oh, you were going to pass me that fabric. See if it works. Right, this, um... yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm just not the camera enough for that. I'm being the camera lady. That was... Will that work? Let's have a look. I don't know. But well, we can try it. So, if you're going to work on something uh, like this beautiful satin and you want to make something, a Regency, nice Regency top. I mean, I work at, I work at, I volunteer and I did, um, but because of Covid, the house has been closed, the, the costume room's been closed, the dressing up room at Lime Hall. Um, but that's where we dress people up. So if you came to visit at Lime Hall, you could dress up in Regency dress, gentlemen as well as women, and the whole shebang, hat, hat, uh, top and tails, and um, yes. Oh yeah, you can see straight That's perfect, isn't that. it? So it's really satiny, really beautiful satin. Uh, flows beautifully. I picked this up in Longside Market. I love that place. And I think I love it mostly because it's where I grew up. Um, and so you draw on there, mm. and then you could add piping, or designs, Sequins. all sorts. So, if you want one of these, you can buy yourself one and get the discount. Is the discount up there? Yes. Discount code's up uh, there. Uh, point to on your right hand side. Yeah, there you go. No, I'm yeah, yeah. Wrong. I'm doing it wrong. Use the code Abby for every 15. Yep. So it's A B I 15. For 15% of it, the www.daylightcompany.com. Ta da! Anne White says, Hello, everybody. Terry says, Good evening. Good evening. Patricia says, Vark Tech. I was hoping you knew what that meant. She just sort of yelled Vark Tech at us. Um, and then Smithy's Misses, which I think you struggled saying that's Smithy's Misses. No, I got that one. No, no you got that. that yeah, there was another name. And I didn't want no. to be rude and get it wrong. Right. So if you if you she have hello, you? if you have a, a a neutral name, you can spell it phonetically. Or it's, it, yeah, it's sort of um, sometimes. I like learning new names. Some people just have um, could nicknames. You, could you fix that for music. me so I can see everybody's chat? Oh. Um. Yes. So. Um, Daylight lamp. I've given them a big promo because they're looking after me. We're looking after you. Um. 
We all look after each other. Oh, we have to quick close the live chat. Look. Thank you, love. Um, and then, so this, if you are a member of Abby's Den, Abby's Den YouTube channel, if you go to, can you bring that up? Did you, did you work you that out? So that they can see the membership screen. Oh, yes. How and then we do that? Which, what, was it this image? Okay. Yeah, there we go. Um, and if you go to um, watching the YouTube video above, so you've got the screen where you're watching the YouTube video, and then just below... Um, this join button here. So you just want to point to this join button. Can they you, see that no, mouse no, no, going no. round? They don't want you to point to it. It's just... Oh. Here we go. <laughs> I have to work it out. I have to be clever. It says join button here. Right. So this isn't today's... Um... So you can join and just support the channel, which will be phenomenal because, um, you know, just... There's perks to it. That's what There's it is. There's perks. You can, you can win all sorts of goodies because we're going to do this as a regular thing. Um, I've been watching other channels and learning how this happens. And so you get perks. Um, and I've got stacks and stacks of good stuff that are just sitting there because I don't teach classes anymore which mm. um, I have lots of different things which I used to have available in my classes and they're just sitting there and I thought do you know what let's just give them away give them away to people who are just wonderful so it's like a little bit like a, a pop look lottery draw if you're into all of that yeah think of it like that this so for Christmas one. we're given a nice little box it's got my favorite things we never got that song out you want me to play it? We've got to do it. So it's got my favourite chalk pen in there, which I must have four of sitting in my drawer because I keep losing them. My favourite uh, threads, Gutterman threads. These are made from plastic bottles. So you're doing your bit for the environment while using good stuff. These are my favourite scissors. I've got them here. And the reason I like them so much is because they sit horizontally uh, on the table so that when you're cutting particularly stretch fabric, when you're cutting them, it doesn't lift the fabric too much off um, the table. Sometimes I cut with scissors, sometimes I cut with rotary um, cutter. It depends. Um, it depends on what I'm cutting. Um, I don't always opt for the rotary cutter. Um, the rotary cutter can become a bit expensive because you're always changing blades if you so often. Um, Self adhesive tape measure that you can stick to your table and it's really good because um, I left it on the table for about a year and then decided I didn't want it on there and peeled it off and it didn't leave any tacky. And how long is that the self adhesive? Is One, there multiple tape measures? It's inches and centimetres and it's 150 if I'm right. It measures 60 inches, 150 centimetres so that's your full roll. But you only get one tape measure now? Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering. I was just asking questions that they might. This is really good. I have to make a stocking, but you're getting it after Christmas, so sorry. <laughs> it's pointless. Yeah. And of course, you're going to get the daylight lamp. Have they seen our stockings? I've got a stocking here because I was going to <gasps> show them. Oh, they're going to love yeah. us. And uh, a machine, what's this one called? Machine Accessories Bible. The Sewing Machine Accessory Bible. Yeah, only because I had a spare one. I was sent a bundle uh, last year. And um, I have, I already had a copy, so I put the copy that they gave me in there. Um, so, and a pair of scissors. They're really good, handy. So if you're a new sewer, it's worth uh, becoming a member. Member to support the channel is 2 99 I think that's right. Yeah, I think, I think we, we looked at it, we never looked at it again. So it's like a um, potluck joining and what I plan to do on there as well I'm really busy at the moment I think everybody is you're all really busy we're all really busy with Christmas and things going on but this weekend my son's coming home from university so his bedroom that's become my store storeroom has got to be emptied I don't think that's happening very t anytime soon we were talking about overlockers overlockers I've not prepared it Threads <laughs> just chasing it just everywhere. threads everywhere. Do you know oh, who did so that? Crazy. You'll know who did that. Was it B? It was B. She comes in our little kitten. She's huge now. She was only the size that big, wasn't she? She was only about mm. that big when she first came and joined us. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. And she, <laughs> who are you laughing at? And she came in 
and she comes into the room and and I hear her and I've left the door open and I come in and I see she's 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 halfway across the room with threads yeah she's and hair band she's like hair band Suki says hello all just a bit late sorry and just said good evening you're looking really well Abby oh it's, it's all the lights <laughs> <laughs> actually it's not hot because it, they're all LEDs they don't get hot, which is really good. So I can, I've got my laptop on there now. And it's mm -hmm. just cold. It's really good. Yeah. I really hope I don't damage it, scratch it all, because I absolutely love it. And I want yeah. it to, and it, it will probably. It's standing. If it's, I know, well, I thought what I could do is just put it on the back. And it could be like a sign. Oh, it, could, it could be a, a That's sign. so true. You could put flowers all around it. Well, I know this really isn't the use for it, but let's all visualise. I think it's fake flowers around and then writing in the middle you know like yeah Abby's jam I think you could get whiteboard pens yeah I'm right well on. yeah because in my head I'm thinking but don't wedding night oh, well I mean yeah <laughs> yeah, they would be happy if you were buying it and doing yeah that. I think I think it's you know even if you don't want to uh, I mean primarily the get the game is the aim game <laughs> is to copy trace patterns so if you've got tracing paper and you're copying a pattern because you know if you're like me and oprah winfrey because that's the only other person i can relate to where your weight is up and down up and down through the year three or four times you're you're making a size 10 one day so you know a few months later you're making a size 16 you don't want to cut into your patterns you just want to trace your pattern um, that's what I've, I've been looking for years for something like this, but the light boxes are really chunky. Um, it's true. They have been really All chunky. All I've seen are just massive ones. And this is A2. I, they, they talked about having an A1, but they don't know if there's enough interest. So if you're interested in an A1, just message them, email them, it says, Abby says, as soon as you get the A1 out, let me know, let you know. And then if we all nag them enough, we'll get the next yeah. size up. Mm. I made this. I'm, com I'm convinced I made this on the overlocker completely. There was a prize in there. There was a present in there. This is for Ellie. Ellie is a gorgeous young lady. She doesn't watch, so I'm going to say that. She hates me. She doesn't she, hate you. She just gets shy, doesn't she's she? She's very shy. She's my son's girlfriend. And she's just the, the most adorable we person. Love so, um... I could tell you, Phil. Yes, I did. I overlocked this. I made it all on the overlock. The only bit I didn't do was seal the seal the inside shirt and top stitch this fur down. So I top stitch it down there. So I sewed it all together at the top, lined it, and and you can do that. And I think that's. The wonderful thing about overlockers you're limited only by your imagination and um you know looking at overlockers a lot of people think it's just stretch originally just three or four years ago people were only using overlockers and probably you know um were just neatening the edges and then when i started teaching i was saying to people why are you only neatening edges why are you spend 500 pounds upwards on a machine that only neat neatens the edge where you've got a perfectly good sewing machine that does it for you and i got frustrated by that well, i didn't really get frustrated and get frustrated by things like this i just thought you know what let's teach people how to sew things so that's where i um put out my lounge pants i think so if you've watched the lounge pants video you can learn how to draft your own lounge pants and i've made them for my kids since they were tiny 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 and you've seen how tall she is now so <laughs> so i've been making sort of jersey clothes for them forever on an overlock and they take minutes i mean my son timed me and i think it took me nine minutes to make him a set of these lounge pants on the overlocker all it boils down to is um how you use it so i thought you know what what we'll do today is a q and a so you can ask all sorts of questions and if you have anything you want to ask about with overlockers ask i'm here i'm available someone says hi dorothy how was your walking meal <laughs> What was that? That's not really the right question. No, it's like, all right. We want to know. What, what, it, what is everyone up to right now? I need to wear my glasses. 
as well, so you can see. Yeah. And Shall I set up? Show them that red bag. What was what was in that red bag? Oh, this bag. Yeah. Okay. Did you ever show them? I think I did. Um. Jo McKinney loves Longside Market too. Terry, good evening. Yeah, man is an awful and feminist nickname. Smith, you know, oh, right. Uh, <laughs> Suki's, hello, all just a bit late. Oh, am I am I not moving down enough? Yeah, there's like a bunch going on. Terry's, the last thing that was said was Terry asking, how was your walking meal? All right. Okay. So, um, if you've got any questions about overlockers, ask them. If you haven't, we won't talk about overlockers. We can talk about something else. We wanted some jokes. Did we have I mean, a? What were they going to win for a joke? What can we... but, um... Oh, today's prize we're giving away was the lamp. Was this machine lamp? Oh, we never announced the winner. We never picked the winner. Oh. You've got to go back to Saturday's oh, show. Oh, we're all here to pick a winner. So you've got to go to Saturday's show. Hello, see who hello commented. Everybody. Now it was flaxseed. Oh, I knew I'd forget to do this. Flaxseed. Flaxseed makes linen, and a lot of you clever people got that right. Um, well, that and good. one of you. What are you looking for? I, I had some flax thread, oh. uh, linen thread, um, to show. So how do we find the comments? Make... What video? don't know and I think you should close your eyes scroll up and then just pick a random name okay this will organize yeah but I think they want to see is this was still live oh yeah there's a name so uh, oh, Jack Steel Fett start us off with a difficult one <laughs> why did we do it like the picker thing from the phone What's that? Oh, we did it randomly, didn't we? I think you're going to have to just scroll up randomly and choose somebody. So it's Europe. At the moment, I just think it's Europe only. Have you picked one? No, I've not. All oh, right. Um, sewing elastic onto uh, satin. Okay. I think there's a sort of, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because you're sewing a thick elastic and satin is fine. So if it was me, I would use a 70 universal needle. Needle. So universal needle, um, it, when I sew satin on a sewing machine, I tend to go for a 60 microtex um, because I just want a very fine uh, needle stab into the fabric so it, it barely does any damage at all. Um, because that's basically what a needle is doing, a needle and a thread hitting and going through your fabric is damaging it, isn't right, it? Right, it's just how doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure any clothes. She's got, if I could show you now, she's got her eyes closed and she's just scrolling up, I'm going to randomly pick. Oh, I that's a good know. one. I can't see from That's on. Um, I'm just talking about elastic on satin dress. So, um, and the settings, what you would do is you would... You have to, it's a very difficult one because I have, I have got some satin, I have got some elastic. You have to just play along with it and alter your uh, looper tensions. Which machine do you have, Jack? Did you want Dorothy's to... asking, have you picked a name? I don't want to do that. You don't have to pick one. You I can't to... pick one. Okay, I'll point, I'll, I'll tell you what. Go for answer number seven. Oh, that's a good way to do it. Number seven. Number seven, is that a good number? Yeah. Lucky One, seven. Two, three, four. Who was it who six, makes hair seven. gel? Hair Heather gel. Dale. Heather Dale. Yep. She got it right. Heather, are you? Heather Dale says is... answer is Lynn. She just got around to watching today's video. Answer is Lynn. Interesting to see your take on free motion embroidery. Right, Heather. We're going to have to. <laughs> Find Heather. Heather Day. I'm going to write that down. Heather. Well done, Heather. You have won a sewing machine lamp. Yay! We need an applause. Yay! Yay! Um, <laughs> shall we do some answering? 
Yeah, I'm sorry. Do sorry, you want I... me to tell you this about this? I... Very, very quickly before we go into our vlogger, so I get this out of the way. These are made from Bohan, and this is going to be one of our prizes. Bohan is a company based in South France. FK knows more than I do. Um, being from there, I think that's right, isn't it? And um, I only found out about them a few days ago. And I spoke to them and they are the loveliest people. They have a factory over in France that they've used all these years. And they're still producing pins, needles and uh, safety pins as well as supplying other things. Um, it's supposed to be, supposed to be because I don't really know. Um, and you know how picky I am. Um, a, a really good solid brand. And um, they've sent me all sorts of things which I've used and I used that needle the other day on a really thick um, fabric I did free motion embroidery I used a 90 needles needle and actually the stitch was really good I was really I carried on stitching with it and usually what happens is sometimes I have broken a needle because I get a bit carried away and a bit impatient with it but this needle just stayed very sharp really good all the way through and I was really pleased so so far so good so Bohan to put it up to the camera is uh, a company we're going to be working with in the new year I'm going to do some stuff with them do you want to pronounce Bohan? it's French my darling Bohan Bohan, Bohan. that's I don't know no, that no, no, no. I'm not sure Bohan Bohan I think that Bohan. is sort of Middle Eastern Arab oh, is it? I think so. Anyway, you've got loads of... She's supposed to be better at... Oh, right, I said Bowen pronounced Bowen. Bo oh. Bowen. Thank you. Yeah. They are based in Normandy, not Sound of France. I oh. love In Normandy? Yeah. Oh. Normandy. 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 <laughs> okay. Anyway, so this is one of the prizes. This is mine for me to play with. Yeah, that looks nice. It is yeah, looks like a toy it's very, bag as well. It's very, like very Christmassy. Bag. Yeah, but you wouldn't... I don't know. Would you use it for toiletries? As well. Why would you? We could do it either or... Yeah, put your toothbrush and toothpaste in there as well. That's too close, sorry. <laughs> but put your toothbrush, toothpaste in there and your sewing kit and a bit of makeup or whatever you fellas want in there. Don't I don't know. I don't know. Fellas wear makeup nowadays. It's one of those things. Anyway, so that's mine, and there's a chance for you to win one of those. And we've got some uh, a pro another prize actually um, from Liberty. Uh, well, Liberty Fabrics. This arrived in the post. It had three of these. I'm only going to show you now because Jasmine's not here. And it's so strong when I open the parcel. It's just got a big uh, smell. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Cloud of beautiful lavender smell uh, aroma came through um, and these are made from Liberty prints but there's all sorts all sorts in there look at these buttons aren't they just I want to say delicious is that a good word there's some key rings and a ruler and um, a doorstop pattern stencil pins all designed with the Liberty print, what's it called? House of Alistair. So it's a, a vintage, I believe, a vintage um, design. Really nice, really, really very chic, very stylish. That could be uh, for anyone, fellas, girls, boys, anybody. So that's another prize. And we've got some more lamps, we've got that. So, um, overlocker questions can we have a look at some overlocker questions so um yes yeah, so i think it's down to loopers um and loosening a bit on the needle tension to help get that stretch um whether you use three or four i would prefer to use four um four thread overlock on um elastic because i think it gives a stronger hold when i use it I'm going to be honest, I've not, I can't think of a time where I've used elastic on satin, um, but I use it on jersey all the time and get a good stretch and it, I just loosen uh, the lower looper, the lower looper a little bit 
I'm going to have to do that again and come back to you tomorrow and just confirm that for you. Um, but which machine did you have? Did you set a brother 1034D? The 1034D is a tricky one to use as well because the feed dogs on that one aren't that strong. Um, uh, I can you adjust the pressure on it? I haven't got a 1034D at the moment. I sort of They come in periodically when I'm repairing them. Um, but if you can adjust the pressure on that, that would be really helpful too. Dorothy has asked, how long do overlocker blades last? Well, that's anything, isn't it? You can buy scissors from all sorts of different places. I had a Janome um, for 20 years and it never occurred to me that I needed to change the blade on it. And I, in fact, had a spare blade in the accessories box, which I completely forgot about um, until about you know, recently when I've started doing all this and I found it in the accessory box and I thought, oh, I suppose I could change the blade. And to be honest, that blade lasted me through Hesse and it's lasted me. The first weekend I bought it, and I've said this lots of times, the first weekend I bought it, I, I was um, at an event in Northampton at their balloon fiesta and I um, sewed roughly some, I can't remember if it was 200 or 300 sarongs from saris and just rolled hem them and they just came out so beautifully and I've made hessian stockings, I've made fur costumes for the kids, velvet curtains, all sorts of things and these blades have lasted forever. I've had a uh, necky and a brother and the blades don't last very long. So when you spend more money you tend to get a better metal, not necessarily that's not necessarily true because at the moment a lot of things are very expensive so it's very hard to gauge where about cost um, but some things have a better tempered metal and they last better so I replaced the necky ones and they work better the other thing about these blades was and I was thinking about it earlier was um, the blades sometimes slip I don't know if that's affected my um, uh, affected my thing. Oh, Jasmine! Sorry, I have to call Jasmine. Um, sometimes the um, yeah, the blades slip down, and when the blades slip down, it doesn't work as well, and it will it will be. Um, it will it will not work and it eats to choose and eats your fabric so you think your blades damaged or um not working or dull um just take it out unscrew it and screw it back in now i've lost the chats because something happened here we go all right so hopefully that answers your question but it's look for burrs look for any nicks and burrs in there um somebody asked me yesterday if she's bought some blades and they don't feel very sharp um when she rides her, uh, rubs her finger against them. They won't necessarily cut your finger if they're single um, and they might feel like they're not very sharp. It's, it's when you've got the top and the bottom working together, that's when you'll know that they're sharp. It's like a pair of scissors. The blades themselves won't necessarily cut you, but when you um, put them together, they will cut. Um, it's very difficult to tell if you're not used to knowing that. Um, so um, how do we how do we know I think you just have to install them so before you buy replacement blades just just check they've not slipped down and just check for any burrs and if you get a nail file you can or an emery board uh, you can probably file them away and um, but get very um, a glass file nail and that that might be able to uh, help you um, get a smoother cut Anne is asking, hope that helps, uh, Dorothy. Anne is asking, how often do you clean and oil your overlocker? Okay, so I tend to, if I'm doing sewing every day, I go through these splurges of sewing and I sew every day, all day, for a three week binge. And I don't know why I do it, but I'm sure lots of you are like that as well. And then I might not sew for about a month or two. And then suddenly I'll start sewing a lot again. Um, 
in that case what I tend to do it's not hours it depends what I'm sewing so if I'm making say a little furry bear costume for somebody a little creature usually not a grown person I tend to give the machine a good clean afterwards or if I was sewing sequins I would give it a really good clean afterwards if it was say um, um, lots of masks and scrubs then I would just because it's a light mid midweight cotton, you're not going to build up a lot of fluff in there. So I would tend to clean it out, give it a good defluff. Um, and I've got videos to show you how to do it for all the different machines I have, um, which are probably the extent of what's out there. Everything I have on the shelf, I cannot think that they are any, any much different to what I haven't got. Um, I don't have baby lock machines I've worked on baby lock machines lots of them and they're again very similar to what I already have so it's not something that I feel I want to spend uh, an exorbitant amount just to have that on my shelf uh, doing an, uh, nothing just collecting dust so have a look at through one of the videos and see how so we're really looking for the noise listen to the sound um, is it sounding clunkier than normal is it sounding uh, if, if you're finding that it's thudding the thudding sound is the needle so change your needle first now if we talk about needles for a second there organ needles I'm not a fan of and the only reason it's not because they're not good they are good but what tends to happen is they can slightly bend so slight that you don't notice and what happens then is you end up with probably you guessed it skip stitches so when you get skip stitches um, you might think that the timing on your machine is out that there's a problem and you're going to throw out the window and it's an expensive fix um, it's usually the needle so if you tend to use the ones that brother have given you with their machine or Janome ones are all organ um, organ needles to me generally I don't tend to use because they bend I like to use the Schmetz needles. The other ones are the Boan, which we talked about earlier. Those needles um, possibly are similar to the Schmetz. I've been told, but I don't have that experience just yet. But I like the Schmetz ones because they just snap. And because they just snap, there's no splintering going on with cheaper needles. So if you go for a cheaper needle, um, I don't want to really uh, be specific about any particular brand um, but going for some cheaper needles you might find that they break in three spot uh, three places or two places and you get three splinters going off and that can leave little pieces inside your machine and I've seen it where you get a little piece uh, straight and then a tiny little curve on the end so it's not only broken it's sort of bent and then broke and that can damage your machine and it can get into parts you don't want it to get into you really don't because that can be an expensive repair rather than a service um, and when people send machines in and I see lots and lots and lots of little and I have seen lots and lots and lots of little ends of needles in the machine I will, the first thing I will tell the owner of the machine is change your needle type so that's uh, one of the big problems um, so cleaning and oiling, oiling your machine do it as regularly as you think servicing it is different servicing to me is sort of taking the cover off and getting in there you probably only need to do that once a year if you're a, a keen sewer so if you're a keen sewer do it once a year if you're not so keen um, and you leave your machines for a while I would just get it out once every six months and just give it a run um, because the thing about oil is you, you want to be making sure that you use proper sewing machine oil it's lightweight it's it's viscosity is low um, or it has a, the thing about viscosity it sits in a bandwidth um, so the, the viscosity has got to sit between this number and this number and the reason is is because it can handle high friction at high movement high movement high temperatures there aren't any high temperatures going on but it keeps it cool if there would be 
high temperatures going on because no one's really just putting their foot down and keeping it going for an hour at a time you you know you stop starting stop starting so um you know people say don't use three in one oil because it congeals well you know it's sitting within that viscosity the thing about you know people use three in one oil 20 years ago but they might not have used that machine again for 10 years and all natural oils all mineral oils a mineral oil natural oil is uh, a mineral oil is something that comes from crude oil um, being a chemical engineer i can tell you all the uh, numbers and things chemical formula and the way it was all you know cracked and whatever um as long as it sits within a certain you know it also sort of starts congealing after a time and it gets hard and it gets ugly and horrid and sometimes you'll see that people haven't cleaned their machine and they've just oiled it and not cleaned it and just oiled it and not cleaned it and then what happens is the big um amounts of fluff congeal and they get trapped in parts and then the machine becomes impossible to use and then people misunderstand that it's the oil that's at fault it's actually not the oil it's just the way it's been cared for and so but do use a light machine oil people say it has to be clear i mean machine oil can be yellow because it does yellow over time and it's still fine so just after a while just make sure you regularly just get it out even if you're not going to use it for much just run it for a few minutes and then put it back um so that the oil in the machine just doesn't start congealing and getting hard and settling in there so does that help does that help <laughs> i don't know so just as long as you uh use it so mad hatter hello hello um i bought the aldi necky overlocker abby i'm a newbie and would love to know how to draft more garments we'll look at your lounge pants video yes have a look at the lounge pants video um I like high-waisted, so I've made them high-waisted. Some people don't like high-waisted, so don't, just don't add as much to the top um, if you don't want to. Joanne Brzozowski. It seems like tension problems are usually related to the left needle. Is that a typical problem, left needle? Um, I wouldn't say so. No, not really. It just seems like it's the left needle. Um it might seem like the left needle because the right needle is actually inside the fabric and and i think you mean on a four thread overlock um it seems like it's the left needle but it's not now i've lost my partner in crime give me one second i'm going to grab something Hello. I'm back. Okay, so what happened uh, a while ago, let's get rid of that. A while ago, I made a tension chart. Um, tension charts are really useful. Somebody said to me yesterday, uh, commented on a post of mine, and said these are pointless, uh, useless waste of time. And I want to disagree strongly with that because years and years and years ago, when I didn't really understand overlockers, I made myself some tension chart and went, I don't know, I don't see the point of that. Um, but when I read about it, I thought <laughs> it wasn't explained properly. And I think, again, I'm going to reiterate, if you're not taught something properly, you have the ignorance. And ignorance breeds fear, fear <laughs> and all of that. So you, you sort of just look at it, this machine as a troublesome thing rather than a useful tool. So when you... Um, when you have tension problems or you're not you just it's not clicking i would recommend very very strongly go and watch the tension chart video and um make yourself tension charts so i made uh, these for the left looper the uh, left looper the lower looper the upper looper left needle and the right needle and all i did was set the machine so i made sure the machine was nice and clean make sure um it's not been and, and it's probably a good idea doing this when the machine is new um so if you're a newbie it's a fun little exercise to do just get some strips of fabric two layers of cotton um and again don't worry about do i have to do it for stretch do i have to do it for leather you don't have to do it for every different fabric the idea is the exercise it's 
understanding the relationship between all the different tensions, the four different tensions that you've got on there. And if you've got the combi um, machine that does the cover stitch as well, then you'll have a fifth stitch. But that's really for a cover stitch machine. I've got a cover stitch machine here somewhere hiding and uh, that I've got to play with. But with this, what it does is, let's see if you can see it. I'm not sure you can. So on here, number three is the right one, yep. I think you can, there's a bit of a lag I'm afraid, sorry. So what it does is as you change the settings, you'll see how the tension is affecting all four threads. So you're only changing the setting of one thread, but all four threads are affected. And then you get to a point and on this machine, it, well not this particular machine, I think I use the Singer, does anybody remember? Um, and the setting was for three and um, so you'll find that all four threads work best at that point and they sort of all come together at that point so then when you carry on down uh, you can see the relationship so sort of, so here I think it's green and it changes all the way down to a point even the fabric starts gathering so um, there's no particular any particular tension problem with any of the four tension threads it's just it may be if you're having a problem with your left needle um, tension it could be that the tension discs could be filled with fluff or the tension calibration on there isn't correct I've recalibrated a lot of overlockers that have come into me um, um, I, I think sometimes people have a go uh, at doing it and it's really good. I'm really a support, I'm supportive of people having a go at, the, at doing these things themselves and that's why I put these um, videos out. But if you have a go and you're unsex unsuccessful, you shouldn't be penalised for it. I mean, I don't, you know, say to the user, the customer, oh, well, you know, you've screwed it up, it's going to cost you £200. Uh, which is just ridiculous um, because it doesn't take a second to change the tension. So have a look at the tension video and see if you can fix that on your machine if it's a consistent problem. But I would definitely recommend doing a tension chart because I think it will definitely help you um, get the settings right for your machine, for you. So on mine, they were all three but you might find that all yours are on four if you're finding really exaggerated differences so one is at one one is at eight another one's at six another one's at three then it's time for a service and either you have a go at servicing it yourself if you're not confident and you know there's no shame in that because um, it has taken me 20 odd years to sort of think you know i'm going to take this seriously now and um um, but I've never paid anyone to do a service on a machine. I've never sent it away. I've always just kept my machines clean, kept them um, oiled, um, just generally because I'm an engineer anyway, so I understand machinery anyway. So if you just keep them clean, keep a drop of oil here and there where it's, you know, the metal on metal joints, then you shouldn't have a problem. You should not have a problem. Just using a machine properly, it should be fine. But um, the other thing you can do is just grab a piece of cotton and I fold it in half. Now some people say floss it. I, when they say use dental floss, I think what's happening is they're mixing up the idea of what's going on. It's sort of a flossing motion, isn't it? So what you're doing is you fold your fabric up in half like that and then just pop it in there. And some machines, the tension is um, directly linked to the press foot on some machines it's not I don't think it is on the brother 1034 so if you put the press foot down have the press foot up I don't think it, it will affect it um, and then just give it a wipe like this and release it and take it out and you can hear it I don't know if you can hear the click but you can hear that it's gone in there just give them a wipe and that will be more or less all you need to do Hopefully, hopefully. Um, let's have a look. Um, how often to oil the overlocker? As uh, oil it, 
when it sort of starts sounding really clumpy but i tend to when i was sewing a lot i was i was giving them a good clean and an oil once a week and that means taking the needle plate off so take your needle plate off that's three screws on this one <laughs> i love this machine let me see if i can i haven't used this vlog for a while but you can see everything there and that's why i love this machine so much more can you see it that's lights in the way isn't it but i love that blue led light in there as well it just feels just right i'm going the wrong way aren't i i'm gonna go this way um i do love this machine i love the jaguar series machines um it's an underplayed unrecognized machine but i definitely love it and um it's the frister rossman uh again we're going back to all machines are made in about three or four factories aren't they all of them so you're going to find this replicated somewhere and it's actually replicated by frister and rossman they're not joined forces or anything like that they don't belong as a team or any sort of conglomerate they are just two different companies that have the same product but there'll be something different about it the plastic mold molding will be slightly different or something will be a different um feature on it um let's have a look do, do, do. i think i'm missing a lot of uh, things tension brother ton oh that was jack's brother 1034d sorry you're late missouri can't believe i missed it I was just talking to my car insurance on the phone oh, i hate that i hate that um well done heather oh yes heather got you down but i don't know if you're here you've not said hello uh it is a lovely prize uh it's beautiful that bag is beautiful um i have a jaguar 489 what's this i've got what this one is <laughs> i think i'd know my machines it is the 99 099 and that was the upgraded version i think it's similar to the 489 i can't be i can't promise you it is your 489 is two year old and felt it was not cutting so well lots of hoodies made but not commercially oh, if you use it commercially who would know who would know um who are you giving them all to then dorothy if you're not selling them um, if it's not cutting well, then just check the knife um, setting, especially if you're doing thick fabrics, like lots of hoodies, you might need to change it actually, it depends. Um, just be careful of pins as well, keep your pins well away, you don't need to have pins always on the edge. I see lots of, when I teach sewing, I don't teach uh, the pins to be on the edge of the fabric, because I don't think you need, need it at the edge. Um, and then you see people put hundreds of pins in. Try and get used to not <laughs> doing it. Jack's come back with, I have another brother serger, 1634, and the feed dogs don't seem to be above the surface. Oh, do you know, that was, a, that was something I want to do, actually, because on the cover stitch machine I bought, the um, feed dogs on that, it's a Jaguar, and the feed dogs on that aren't, very high so i thought i don't think i've shown anybody how to raise the feed dog so thank you jack for that reminder i'm gonna write that down feed dogs on your overlocker let's do it let's show you how to do that but it won't be the same machine i haven't got a, a brother i only have one brother overlocker if you speak to any mechanic i've spoken to over 20 different shops around the uk in the recent months asking about uh, which is the most recommended, which sewing machine would you re recommend to a beginner? And um, asking about overlockers and no one recommends brother. They sell them, but they don't recommend them. So, sorry. I don't like them. I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm, I'm not a big fan of them. They, they're just clumpy. They just, they, the metal bends too quickly on them. Um, and that frustrates me it frustrates me for your sake really because i think people are bringing machines to me that shouldn't break that easily that you know and that that makes me cross for you because uh, they're not cheap are they um and the um what was it the m343d from uh, amazon which is just 
they they're all the blue models at uh, the lower model i bought that on amazon and they were all i think mine were uh, mine cost me just over 100 pounds but during covid they went up to 300 and i was livid i think it's disgusting to be honest that that companies take care uh, exploit us like that because i'm one of you i'm a customer just like you i think it's disgusting that they exploit us like that um so not a big fan Adam Sows says Schmetz or Epic or going to come with Dukies now too. I think they do. I think you're right. Let me see. I've got a Jaguar here, haven't I? Should we see what, what it is? I haven't got my phone to go in. I, I suspect this is organ too. With the Jaguar. Does anybody know? Can you see? So I think there's 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 um something going on. There's a, a spam. Can you see? I don't think you can see, can you? I suspect these are organ as well. I think I think it's that they are the biggest manufacturer for sewing machine manufacturers, a supplier to manufacturers. And I reckon that's why they're all organ, because they're all made in in the same place. Who else have we got? We Schmetz are Brill, yes, they are. Missouri, I think Schmetz are. I will use them until i discover whether i like boan or not but um we have to see we've got missouri how can we finish a neckline in an overlocker sorry abby i have so many questions and i'm a huge fan oh well we like fans and we like questions how do you finish a, no a, a, a neckline do you know what wouldn't it have been good if i had set up samples to do um with with um let's pretend this is a neck band with a neck band i would stitch that together i would make it it's funny isn't it because they they give you a dead cert answer some uh, some patterns they say it's two inches smaller make it so measure the neckline with your tape measure as, as you sewn it and then make the neck band two inches smaller. I've read 85% uh, of the size or knock off one inch. So with every pattern, there are so many patterns, they all have a different theory. What I do, because I wing it a lot, what I do is I stretch the, uh, and it depends if you buy ribbing or if you're using the actual t-shirt fabric because I made a velvety top and you can't get velvety ribbon so I actually used a piece of the velvety and that's really stretchy so I took a lot more off I can't remember if I did actually take two inches off so make the, the ring two inches shorter overlock that together the edge and then you've got that and then just fold it over like that uh, and that will be a perfect ring <laughs> that will end up being a perfect ring we should do this as a sample shouldn't i i should have i should have made something should we do should we do that should we sew along should we arrange a sew along and you can all get your pattern pieces together and we can try them together and then just sew that in and then you're gently pulling that don't give it a good yank that you know like you see you typically mark the four points and mark the shoulders one at the back i always keep my line now i some of you are as old as me some of you are older haha <laughs> you shouldn't do that um and <laughs> polo necks i'm sorry i'm rude uh the polo necks they used to have that seam so you know where that seam is it used to be on the back but not in the middle on the side and as a kid i used to look at that and i used to wonder why on earth have they done that and i think it was just to help you identify the front from the back, I used to say, but it was never in the middle at the back. It was always on the side. Does anyone else remember that? Am I just going loopy? No, I'm not loopy. My kids think it. <laughs> right, let's see. Um, thanks, Anne. Thank you for the support, FK. Your attention chart is a real godsend and a real must. I definitely, definitely uh, recommend it. Um, it's like what the example I gave is like whisking an egg. Now, if you whisk an egg, yes, we all know it goes liquidy, but how much to whisk and how long to whisk and did, um, unless you physically actually do it with a tangible result in your hands, um, it's harder to know 
how your machine will cope and I think that's really important you want to know how your machine will cope but it also helps you identify like I said before uh, the real differences in the numbers so if you've got a seven a one a three and a four then you know your machine needs a service if you are setting it at factory settings and getting the result that I show you on the video then you know that your machine is perfectly fine and there are just some lessons for you to learn and we all learn and we all grow we all get better at things through practice so yeah just keep keep at it i don't know what this vasper tech is i think it's a spam thing that's going on so we'll ignore that friends and families all will check other things you mentioned but have new blades now if needed right yes definitely check if the blades have moved check that they're not damaged and uh, then invest in blades because blades can be jolly expensive really expensive <laughs> Missouri says, oh, by the way, I don't think my user looper got bent. I think it just meant to be that way. Oh, are you on Facebook that I mentioned? I checked online for replacement part and it's just curved too. Oh, that's interesting. I couldn't really see the angle of it, which, um, so I couldn't tell. Um, if you have a look at my timing video, I show you, because on that one, I've got a bird's eye view of the loopers. Um, and I've done a sketch and it's a poor sketch and I should get better at drawing actually, shouldn't I? I should improve my drawing. But it they sort of, I thought of, is it a yin yang sort of thing that goes on with the loopers? They sort of like that. I can't, <laughs> I can't think. Um, so they look like they're bent from the top, but from your, for the side angle that you were showing me, it looked like it was bent from the side. But I don't think they're meant to be bent, but they do have a shape to them. Anyway, so, um, but that's good. Good news. It means you don't have to replace that part. Um, oh, Jack. No, I don't, I don't dislike brothers. I just dislike the company <laughs> and their, uh, the way they treat customers. I think it's really naughty. The engineers in, in Manchester are lovely. Uh, I'm not going to blame the engineers at all. Their engineers are brilliant. Um, Let's have a look. Um, Missouri, that's the upper looper, yes. Lutalo. Lutalo is a pattern drafting thing. Um, I've never really got into it. I have a copy of the book, but not the actual patterns. And I tried it, but it is. It's like a guessing game, I thought, so I'm glad it's not. Can you sharpen your overlocker blades? Uh, it says Summer Apple Society. I love that name. Wouldn't it be nice to be summer again? But I do like winter as well. Um, can you sharpen your overlocker blades? I have tried, not successfully. I've used all sorts of tools. We have a tool mech down at the workshop. I work, I volunteer again. I volunteer for the Tools for Self Reliance uh, charity. We we send machines to Africa, so I've repaired lots of machines that get sent over there, and I've. And we use a Tormek there where we can sharpen scissors and things. I have not successfully sharpened overlocker blades, if I'm honest. If somebody else has, I'm sure there probably is a, a way of doing it. I've got whetstone, I've used files, I've used uh, foil, all sorts of d different tricks. I can't, I just haven't been successful with it. Um, sorry, that wasn't an answer you were looking for though. I know, I'm sorry. Because um, we'd all save a lot of money, wouldn't we? Bev Shepherd, hello. I have always sewn knit bands on first with the sewing machine to check it before overlocking. Good idea. Good tip. It's like tacking, really, isn't it? It's basting it in place. Um, what else have we got? Um, Missouri, please do a class on this. I would love that. Oh, what did I say? On sewing neck bands. Is that right, Missouri? <laughs> I'm not paying attention to what I'm saying. Um, yes, I remember the polar next like that. Thank you, Anne. It's not me going do lally. Yes, it's me. Oh, yes. Maybe try a sharpal pen thing. I don't know what that is. And that's it for questions. None of you have asked very much. But do you know what? We've been on for an hour, which is about as long as we said. Yes, neck bands. Oh, right. Yes. 
Um, yes, we should do a class on it, Ben. Should we do that? Should we do some more overlocking? Was that sufficient? And we've got our winner for today, Heather Dale. Well done, Heather. Um, I've not seen you here. Um, sorry, some more Apple, be, uh, Apple Society. Yeah, it's a shame. Um, so the winner today, Heather Dale, is going to win that. Now, um, today I have lost my sound engineer, whatever she is. <laughs> it makes my beautiful banners. Um, she's amazing, uh, Jasmine. She's she's just so helpful. All my kids are, actually, if I'm honest. I have one who does all my graphic designs. He's the one who helped me understand this technology and how to make videos. Um, and he's off doing graphic design at university. He's the one coming back. So it's exciting. I'll learn lots of new things from him. Then Jasmine uh, does a lot. She was my co-helper with my teaching in classes. Um, and you saw her earlier. Um, and yes, um, and the other two, I've got one who is my business. He's sort of like, oh, what's that character in uh, Jimmy Cricket? Your conscience. Yeah, he sort of sits there and he says, Mum, you can't just give all your stuff away. Don't tell him. <laughs> uh, and then I've got the youngest one who just is my biggest cheerleader ever. He's just, they're just great. I've got great, great, great kids. And then uh, my gorgeous modelling husband. I, differential feeds are tricky, aren't they? If um, I've got a video on differential feeds, Bev, um, again, I would practice, practice, practice. Just if you're struggling with your machine, the first thing I would suggest is give your machine a clean, just give it a good clean. Um, have a look at through all the videos doesn't matter which video you watch um i know sometimes it's really nice to have your machine that sat in front of you with me demonstrating on the uh, video but but to me sewing machines and overlockers are essentially all the same they all have the same elements inside of them you just need to make sure that the metal moving parts are oiled, just one drop of oil. I had uh, a machine in recently, it was swimming at the bottom and when the lady took it out of the loft, a cold uh, loft, and she plugged it in, um, she panicked because it smelt of burning oil, which is what's going to happen. So just a drop here and there, you don't need to squirt, squirt and drench anything um, but the base. It was just swimming in oil. I've had a few like that. Um, just first clean all the fluff out. Use a nylon brush. So just a kid's paintbrush will do. Um, or an old makeup brush. I don't, actually, I don't know if a makeup brush will be good because they, some of the uh, bristles were quite fine on them. But just give it a good brush through. Get rid of all that dust. Get rid of all the lint and any insects in there. If you're going to send it to me, thank you. Um, because we get a few of them. Um, and then put the oil in. Because you don't want that fluff uh, congealing and trapping in parts. Um, just check for threads everywhere. I think overlockers on general are okay for threads. Um, it's just some sewing machines. And it tends to be the Janome, unfortunately. The elbow, the take-up lever, traps threads in there. And some of the older brother models on the hand wheel, that's, that's, I've seen a lot. But um, on overlockers, just that, just check your tension. So I'm just looking at my other overlockers that are sitting on there, just to remind me what else. Just check there's no fluff in the tensions, uh, dials. You don't need to put oil in there. Somebody asked me about that one. Do you put oil in the tension disc? You don't need to put oil in there. Uh, don't don't use floss don't use dental floss don't use wax in there that's just going to mess it up just use a piece of cloth cotton cloth fold it over just like i showed you before um always make sure your telescopic thing is up that's a mistake i make i i just leave it halfway i get a bit lazy and i don't pull it all the way up so make sure you pull that all the way up that will help feed the threads down properly and through and just make sure you thread in order because just at this point here is where 
the crisscross, if they're in the wrong order, the crisscrossing, they get tangled up and the thread keeps coming undone. So if your thread keeps coming out, it's because you just need to take it all out now uh, and just re-thread. Um, I just love this machine. I don't get it out enough. I need to do something on it. Um, it's making me want to sew. It's just It just looks beautiful and it sounds just beautiful. Um, what else? Um, and then once you've done cleaned it make tension charts try to understand it ask questions i'm going to be live until christmas now so um ask me questions if you want to on facebook on instagram please do comment in the section below ask questions and i will get to them and it will be on my mind to either look for a solution and answer for you and i will come back to you with it um because that's essentially what i do i want to help um Summer Apple Society is in South Africa and the blades are so rare. Oh, that's a bit annoying, isn't it? Maybe you make friends over here and <laughs> get somebody to send them to you. Um don't know what else to say. Um sharpen blades blades sharple. Oh, to sharpen blades, sharp. Oh, okay, I'll look into that. Maybe I'll pester you on Facebook and you can tell me some more. That'd be good and then we can tell everybody um fk ipad users can use an app called lightbox trace it's a bit smaller than a2 just a bit uh, but effective as a light box oh that's always handy to know lightbox trace um jack's jack says oh you are so lovely glad i found your channel thanks Gabe. oh jack you are very very welcome and i think what we're going to do is, I would like for you to win. Do you know what? Let's we give this away. Let's go for it, Bowen. Let's go for it. Oh, I've got this sewing book to give away, haven't I? As well. Still haven't finished reading my copy. I need to. I need to. I need to finish reading it. So then I can tell you what it's about. Nobody tell. I know some of you have read it. Don't tell me what it's about. Let's let's give this away. Right. We're going to give this away. It is the 13th of December. So there are, let's do the maths really quickly, seven, add five. What's that? 12 days. 12 days left. Can you believe it? Um, we'll give this away. I'll get them to send it to you in time for Christmas. All you need to do is give me a hilarious joke in the comments below. Not in the, not in the chat because I won't see it later, it will disappear and then it will be gone forever and then you'll miss your chance and then we'll all get upset. Um, we want good jokes. Cheesy is fun. Cheesier the better really actually because I laugh at really cheesy jokes. <laughs> I'm really late. Can't think of one. Has anyone got a joke to start us off with? Anyone got us a good joke? Let me think. Um, there was one I read the other day and it didn't it wasn't funny. Um there's always the singer one, yeah. Um what is it? Two two sewing machines walked in into the bar. Uh one was a singer and said, Do you know me? Oh, something like that. I am bad at telling jokes. That was awful, wasn't it? That was awful. Right, I'm gonna say goodbye for now, guys. And um I have to go over there to say goodbye because my engineer's gone. Um, thank you so much for joining me. You're going to have just a blank screen. Ask questions. Please ask questions in the comments below. It doesn't take a minute or a second for you to click the thumbs up to like this um, like this video. So please do like the video. Please do hit the subscribe. And if you want to be in our gang of members who get to win this bundle, of course, the sun machine lamp. Don't worry about this one, you'll get, um, um, Heather, you're going to get a brand new one directly from the company. This one's got that, uh, a cut, I cut the packet and then realised I've already got one, so I didn't need to open it after all. Um, this one's going to one of our members, so if you want to be a channel member, that would be amazing. So click join and join in and we're going to have some sort of all sorts of fun going on. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure and I will see you soon. And I'm going to go around there and switch you all off. So goodbye.